Hello, this is Dr. Mikhail Arashik of Mara Genomics once again. I wanted to make a series of quick videos based on all of the different information that is coming out right now. And this particular one, uh, I will be showing you the latest data from the UK. And what's interesting about this data is that it's the first time I get to see um, where vaccinated people appear to be more infected than unvaccinated and i wanted to break that down and, and show you this information because it's somewhat unusual and i wanted to discuss why that would uh, why that could be so let's ju jump right into it and see what we got here is the document that i'll be looking at this was just published a few days ago by by the uk government one of the agencies and the first piece of information that i wanted to look at is right there which says that 98 percent of all of the adult population in the uk already have antibodies against the virus and uh, that includes approximately 20 percent of the population based on natural infection so this is really significant because it's also the first time that i've seen anyone present the data that indicates that pretty much you have reached herd immunity everyone has antibodies against the virus in one way or another and i'll show you the graph this is really really interesting let's move on and here's the first data that i wanted to show you it shows you the effectiveness of the vaccines this data is uh, for the most part just made up <laughs> and the reason why i say that is because they they actually show that all of these numbers are low confidence meaning they really just don't know they just made up the numbers right here based on what was originally historically presented i don't know why why this is the case because clearly i think the based on how much quality data uk is collecting they should be able to measure this quite effectively and even the high confidence data right here it's mentioned that this is observed in the first three to four months post vaccination so again this does not represent the current moment in time so it's somewhat i find this particular information is not really uh, it's somewhat misleading i would actually say it's not represent the true reality yet and and uh, on this page, this is really neat uh, information. It shows you how people are vaccinated in the UK. You can see that uh, the youngsters are starting to be vaccinated, everyone between 16 to 18 right there. But what I found interesting is that anyone between age of 18 to 40, they reached a plateau in, in the vaccination status. This is one dose only, but it shows you the limit of the population beyond which in this age demographics people no longer want to be vaccinated so about two-thirds of the population in uk got vaccinated in this age demographic one-third did not for whatever reasons they one of the obvious reasons could be fear of the long-term effects of these vaccines which we do not know what they yet could be and the other good reason and the, the really valid reason is the fact that probably majority of those people uh, have already be, been infected and they feel like they already have some uh, natural protection against uh, future outcomes and here is those two and it's a similar pattern it shows you that uh, approximately between 50 to 60 percent of all of the people between 18 to 35 uh, get the second dose beyond that no one else is getting vaccinated but once again keep in mind that despite these vaccination status um, everyone else already has antibodies which means if you haven't been vaccinated most likely you've been infected and you already have some protection however obviously it makes perfect sense that the high-risk groups which is the the old older uh, generations they are um, highly vaccinated that makes sense because they are at the highest risks of negative outcomes as we all know now let's move on to this data this is the really interesting data this shows you the how many people are being uh, infected right now in the uk total number versus unvaccinated number and if you look at the unvaccinated numbers apart from everyone under 18 which uh, makes sense because most of the people under 18 are still unvaccinated 
when it comes to all other age demographics, the vast majority of people who are infected are, are vaccinated, not unvaccinated. And really the, the most interesting data is right here because it uses common denominator between both vaccinated and unvaccinated, which is the rate of infection per 100,000 people, which means you, it allows you to compare apples to apples. So pretend that you have the same equal number of people in a room who are vaccinated versus unvaccinated and how many of those who are vaccinated versus unvaccinated uh, are getting infected with the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And you can see that apart from anyone under the age of 30, the, if you're unvaccinated, you are more likely to, to be infected. But once you go over age of 30, for every single age demographic that is studied, vaccinated people end up, end up being more frequently infected per 100,000 people that are unvaccinated. I've never seen this yet. We've seen some of this information before from the UK, but they did not, that information I presented in, a, in video number 11, did not break this down into individual um, demographics. Uh, and this is fantastic to be able to actually see that because the question is why. I'll, sh I'll discuss that uh, more in a moment. For now, let's look at another table. This is hospitalizations in the UK. And here, if you're vaccinated, the data clearly show you're less likely to be hospitalized. Once again, let's just focus on the per 100,000 demographic, which means again, we're comparing apples to apples. And you can clearly see that for all the demographics, if you're vaccinated, you're less likely to end up being hospitalized than if you are unvaccinated. And let's look at also deaths. And once again, that same trend holds true. When it comes to deaths, let's compare per 100,000 people. If you're vaccinated, you're much less likely to die from COVID-19 than if you are unvaccinated. What's really interesting is this data right here, that for children, anyone under 18, if you, whether you're vaccinated or not, the likelihood of you dying is almost zero. In fact, it's so low that it could not even be determined per 100,000 people. Even if you look at uh, population between 18 to 30, within that population, it, only about four people per million people will die of COVID-19. So the likelihood of anyone dying um, from COVID-19 up to the age of 30 or so is just exceedingly small. It doubles that for the, up, up to the age of 40. So if you're unvaccinated, eight people out of a million will die of COVID vaccine. So you're fairly well protected if you're a younger individual from, from the most severe outcomes. These gets worse as, um, as people get older. And that makes sense because as all, uh, the older you get, the more likely you are going to witness other health complications as well that might actually exacerbate the outcome of COVID-19 disease. Now let's take a look at graphical representation of that same information I just showed you. So here is, here's the rate once again of vaccinated versus unvaccinated being infected. Let's ignore the youngsters because most of them are unvaccinated. You can see that pretty much for every single age group, if you're vaccinated, these people are getting more infected than unvaccinated. And this is a really, really surprising result. I actually don't know how to explain this. Mm, one and I have two suggestions or two hypotheses. One could be because possibly, and I don't know if this is true because I didn't look into it, but possibly UK is forcing same type of segregation uh, um, in under population and the way we are doing in Canada or or in the US where where um, more and more unvaccinated people are barred from being able to participate in normal social activities that um, allow access to unvaccinated people. Basically, unvaccinated people, at least in Canada, are barred or being pressured uh, from not being able to interact with the crowds. And, um, and that could be perhaps the reason why we're seeing uh, this trend in UK. If UK is segregating the society in the same fashion, that would simply mean that unvaccinated people are simply do not have the same level of exposure to the virus, to circulating virus, the same way that vaccinated people could, could be exposed to. So that could explain these results. Another possibility, and this is actually what worries me, is that perhaps there is another reason for it that could explain this, and that could be 
because of the possibility that vaccination promotes the antibody dependent enhancement. So what does that mean? This is actually where the antibodies that you produce um, could promote infection as opposed to prevent infection. This is this happens in, in real life. We know this can happen in COVID-19 patients, but hasn't been demonstrated in vaccinated individuals at all yet. And the reason why it hasn't been demonstrated, because as far as I know, it hasn't been studied yet. So we should study this uh, the, this to determine, to at least try to nullify that hypothesis to make sure uh, to make sure that um, this uh, these vaccines are uh, continue to be safe from promoting infection. And once again, here is the demo and the graph showing that if you are vaccinated, you are more protected from hospitalization than unvaccinated people. And once again, visual representation uh, against protection from death. So these vaccines, remember, uh, vaccines were approved in um, for protecting you from severe disease outcomes. These vaccines, none of these vaccines have ever been approved for stopping infection. So it's not a surprise that, that uh, therefore, that we seeing vaccinated people getting infected. I am surprised that we're seeing more vaccinated people being infected than unvaccinated, but it's not a surprise that they are being infected because that's not what these vaccines were designed for. They were designed for to protect you from the disease. And in that regard, they're still working very well, including, including the, the Delta variant, which is what would be the, the vast majority of the data being presented here, because this is, uh, this is last 28 days where that would be majority of those infections in the UK would be Delta or Delta Plus. So uh, also keep in mind that the UK predominantly is vaccinated with AstraZeneca vaccine. So that's different than the mRNA vaccines. So this, this phenomenon, this surprise phenomenon we see right here could be attributable only to AstraZeneca vaccines. However, some of the population in, U in the UK is infected, sorry, is <laughs> vaccinated with the Pfizer vaccine, mRNA, mRNA vaccines as well. And um, it would be great to see what the differences are. Hopefully, we will not see duplication of this pattern in other Western countries, which are predominantly vaccinated with the Pfizer vaccine. The last piece of data that I wanna show you is right here, which shows you the seropositivity um, in the UK population. With, what that means is how many people in the population already show antibodies against, uh, against the viral proteins. And you can see pretty much everyone is now showing seropositivity. Everyone for at least two months have been fully protected with some form of antibodies against the virus. Uh, this is, you're not gonna be able to go any further than that. Most likely this is as close to herd immunity as we'll ever get with these vaccines. Uh, and how can you differentiate between vaccination versus natural infection? This is the way this was done by, is by looking against the, with the antibodies against the different protein. This is the N protein right here in red. N stands for nucleocapsid protein. Nucleocapsid protein is inside the virus. So the only way you can measure uh, antibodies against that protein is if you were infected with the real virus that uh, eventually was broken down and the nucleocapsid was released and exposed so that you could build antibodies against it. Nucleocapsid is uh, inside the inside the virus. It actually is involved in packaging of the, gen of the virus genetic material. It's also required for proper replication of that genetic material. So once again, you, the only way you can build antibodies against that protein is if you've been infected by the, by the virus. So this shows you how many people in the UK populations have been naturally infected. That natural infection is at a steady state lately being increased, most likely because of the Delta variant. And it shows you that the infection, natural infection rate amongst the population is quite high, re reaching 20% with such a high, high prevalence of infection in the population. That's the one good news out of that is that you can feel very certain that the PCR test results will, when they're positive, they are highly accurate because the higher, the higher in, the infection rate in a, in a population, the more likely the positive results are true positives. So that's actually good news um, because at least it means that if you test yourself with PCR 
test result and you get positive result, the, the likelihood of that result being accurate right now is extremely high. The only other uh, information that I'll show you is the breakdowns uh, of antibodies um, prevalence in based on age. And what I like in this particular graph is that it shows you that the oldest population in the UK shows the least least infection with the virus because of the antibodies being detected against the nucleocapsid protein. And that's very good and very important because that's the highest, the group that has the highest risk of negative outcomes if naturally infected. So it's good to see that they are most protected and this protection pattern should continue. In my opinion, the only way we can truly protect people right now uh, when we see this much level of infection amongst vaccinated is mass surveillance with testing. Because remember, another powerful weapon we have against the virus is quarantine. While we cannot um, outsmart the virus that can mutate so easily, we can easily outlive it because it's the life uh, cycle of the virus is short. In two weeks, if you sit in your room for two weeks, you're going to beat the virus. So one of the ways to now protect ourselves in a population is a mass screening. I truly believe uh, in this to such a degree that I'm actually involved in a project that is uh, building a mass screening tool uh, for such purposes. So I obviously think that's as true as it possibly can be. And it also means with level of these level of antibodies that we're observing in a population, segregation of the population based on vaccination status completely makes no sense. It's just unnecessary damage to the society um, by forcing people to be to participate in what is in essence a medical experiment or let's not uh, let's not forget that we don't know the long-term outcomes of of these novel vaccine technologies yet and it makes no sense because you are likely now whether you're vaccinated or not you will have antibodies against the virus at least in the uk i would love to see this type of data in canada and also it clearly shows whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated it makes no difference whether you are infected and spreading the the infection further so that's everything i wanted to show you in this video i found this information really fascinating and captivating surprising a little shocking and we'll see what it means in the long term hopefully we're not dealing with antibody dependent enhancement i think we should study that to make sure uh, so that we can um, well feel safe and um, if you like this information give us a like leave a comment and subscribe to the channel you know how it works all of that helps and see you in the next video bye for now everyone